All right, let's talk about some challenges to write, uh, I mean, machine learning systems, uh, to build machine learning systems. Uh, so the first is, uh, I mean, most probably uh, all these three are relevant to, or I mean, tightly uh, dependent on each other. I mean, they're uh, very, very s symmetrical problem, symmetrical issues is that, uh, the systems, the machine learning systems, uh, or the systems that you build with AI are only as good as the data that we put into them. I mean, uh, so look back on the problem that we talked about uh, classifying uh, cats and dogs from photos. Uh, I mean, if I mean, if the data or the the stock photos. Uh, uh, are not comprehensive of all cats and dogs uh, at the end of uh, the system design the classification system design cat and dog classification system design we don't ex really expect much uh, that it, it will perform well uh, in the wild all right so and also uh, definitely uh, consequences I mean uh, bad data uh, may explore or express implicit racial or gender biases this is very very alarming and critical that you understand uh, that actually if the data set the decision uh, say good or bad examples that I've mentioned before uh, if those goodness or the badness of the data samples or the experience say for example experience one this is a there is a story uh, that uh, undermines a, sp a specific age group uh, and you're feeding these data into building a machine learning system to make decisions for for I mean for future outcomes uh, you don't expect that actually your machine learning model is gonna be impartial uh, so that's one of the critical and very alarming uh, component uh, I mean issue in machine learning system design and uh, a crucial principle for both uh, humans and machines is to avoid bias and therefore prevent discriminations in uh, all regards. It's uh, very difficult even for human to uh, I mean express or do activities in uh, I mean I mean fairly at some point but at least actually since uh, I mean, if you'd like to build a decision support system to be used by a majority of the people or the society, you want to apply or practice the machine learning system should practice those fairness uh, and also definitely strictly strictly enforce discrimination. And if it is flagged, maybe during executions, maybe after a month or two, somebody complains about uh, that. Uh, your system is biased towards uh, a specific protected class uh, definitely uh, that's not good for uh, the system that you deployed uh, there might be consequences that you don't want so definitely uh, this course is about machine learning system design but before we jump into that uh, jumping uh, into the technicalities uh, we should uh, understand uh, about the challenges uh, all right so and uh, an analogy actually uh, that AI has been used for good purposes and also bad purposes as well so I mean uh, hacking you know about the cybersecurity uh, I mean adversaries they also use machine learning tools to hack a particular system say the understanding the overall behavior the network activity or the finding those vulnerable nodes or entities or the computers uh, and at the same time on the defense side actually uh, uh, we tend to build uh, machine learning models to track uh, those activities uh, block those activities ban those users and such and such so uh, you have to understand about the two sides of the s machine learning systems uh, I expect that actually you will be on the good sides uh, to help and make a good impact on the society. Uh, 
but again uh, all always understand actually there is also another side of the story so definitely you need to see actually whether your model your machine learning system will can it be exploited by someone or some organization for a bad purpose uh, all right so i mean yeah, here is an analogy there that fire is good for cooking food getting warmth but at the same time it can burn houses so uh definitely you need to understand the two sides of the uh story uh here is uh, the one particular example uh, of using machine learning system to hire uh say people uh in in a company uh there's programs like guild and Telo, texto doxa and most companies they have or they're probably using some tools of this sort as i mean reading a resume or cv uh they will filter out uh or filter in i mean uh, so select some of the i mean shortlist some of the candidates and uh, it, it, it is, I mean, a phenomenal. I mean, it's a, uh, it saves a lot of time from human, uh, how's that? I mean, uh, re I mean, recruiter or the reviewer of those CVs. Uh, but at some point, actually, uh, uh, in in back in 2017, I mean, uh, I mean, or at one or two years, uh, or I mean, before that, uh, I mean, Amazon was blamed that actually their AI tool was biased towards hiring men uh, so that has to I mean that's the reason actually they had to scrap uh, that automated hiring tool uh, in in 2017 after three years of deploying that uh, there are technology uh, all around us uh, surveillance technologies are used in bus stations in street corners even uh, in the neighborhood uh, most houses uh, or apartment complex they use a ton of surveillance uh, technology and also I mean human tracking uh, so you can I mean uh, I mean you, you can see actually that uh, the issue with too much applications of surveillance might have a bigger impact on our daily lives uh, so for example we don't want to get recognized uh, I mean say so that actually maybe uh, you were tagged or identified at a crime scene or uh, later de detected maybe and also uh, the, the lawsuit may tie you uh, in corroborating with uh, uh, some some bad guys so uh, and maybe uh, People may accuse I mean, if the surveillance tracked someone because you know actually that there is no 100% uh, uh, recognition uh, facial recognition does exist so if your uh, you I mean I mean if a look-alike uh, person was detected elsewhere where uh, I mean uh, a, a, an accident happened uh, you uh, you might be get into the trouble so uh, I mean I mean privacy uh, is becoming a dream now it is actually that actually I can remain I mean quiet I can uh, live a, a quiet life without being recognized without being detected is uh, becoming a dream I mean getting into the past I mean it's, it's no longer I mean and also we're moving towards uh, that territory into the world where it's uh, quite impossible to to achieve that kind of privacy uh, so that's a I mean that might be something actually this is that makes a bigger impact into the society and the, their people's lives um, and also this is actually an, an interesting project uh, I mean definitely leveraged with uh, uh, machine learning uh, that learns natural language text actually uh, natural language communication uh, and it mimics the language of a it was essentially a Twitter bot it tweets 
uh, and also it can interact with human users on the Twitter and in, by interaction definitely it tweets it retweets and uh, with comments it can read comments and also based on I mean it understands uh, there is component that it understands uh, a, 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 the meaning of those tweets and I started replying Twitter users able to put captions uh, to photos in other users tweets uh, and uh, some users on Twitter, I mean, uh, since it, it is a kind of a learning machine, I mean, uh, a, a program that learns from other people's uh, tweets uh, that was, I mean, uh, that retweeted or commented on uh, uh, Tay's uh, tweets. So what happened is actually some users on Twitter began tweeting politically incorrect phrases uh, to Microsoft's Tay, teaching it inflammatory messages revolving around common themes on the internet and the result is uh, the Twitter bot began releasing racist and sexually charged messages in response to other Twitter users and uh, finally actually Microsoft had to take it down 16 just 16 hours after its launch uh, so that's I mean it's a power tool that actually it, it learns or it knew how to learn but you see the consequences of learning. I mean, without moderation or uh, those checks or block points, definitely have to be understanding about that. The blame game, actually, uh, I mean, who to blame? I mean, the developers of the those tools or uh, or us? I mean, uh, I mean, or, or the technology itself? Uh, I mean, definitely we should not. Uh, blame the technology. I mean, this is my personal opinion. Actually, uh, ethics, uh, these ethical impacts that we uh, are making or we are about to make into the world, uh, this is a, not a technological problem. This is the problem. I mean, this is our problem. I mean, the developers' problem. So, uh, or I mean, definitely the team, whole team who who build that uh, model, machine learning model, or the computer program uh, that we are talking about. So. Uh, definitely so it's all becomes your responsibility if you are want to become a data scientist you should understand this this is a long list of agreements uh, that you need to sign so that's why I, I I encourage that actually you understand the issues challenges before you start at the top of the data pyramid right so the machine learning AI those cool algorithms will come a lot later before you uh, or said, uh, do some homework about the impacts and challenges. So, uh, how to teach AI ethics? So, there is a European organization, uh, I mean, this is called uh, GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, uh, was established and it's been applied uh, many years. I mean, uh, and they were successful. Uh, most of the websites that you uh, browse these days and uh, I mean those are I mean they sometimes actually they uh, have you accept cookies or something uh, or these allow uh, you to being tracked uh, those are essentially they have to do that otherwise those websites may be turned down or maybe they will be penalized uh, for a fee uh, because they were not practicing those regulation uh, so the rules that you cannot allow a computer so this is um, um, they, they, they say actually their statement is that you cannot allow a computer to make a decision that you cannot explain as a human uh, this is very important at this point actually this is just a policy I mean uh, the in the age that we all are living uh, so we we don't I mean we are making or deploying a machine learning model to make decisions on behalf of us but at the same time actually if the machine learning model predicts that this is a cat the model itself needs a way i mean uh, to tell you the tell human uh, about why it predicted it something to be cat right so you know, a proper explanation so you i mean as a human you can also be able to tell this is a cat so there has to be something uh, we should not treat machine learning as a black box uh, one way to reduce bias or avoid bias is to remove the sensitive data from um, I mean uh, 
uh, in the first place before you feed that data into the building that machine learning model but the problem is uh, there is one uh, I mean issue of disparate uh, impact I mean uh, first actually by removing you are definitely eliminating uh, segregation in the I mean treatment I mean you don't treat samples data samples differently based on those classes so for example gender race uh, some of somebody else's uh, credit score and so on and so forth uh, but uh, still there might be implied bias uh, I mean that doesn't directly uh, I, mean, I mean you can correlate that but uh, you are only removing those particular call uh, properties of the data data sample but still the data might contain in a, in a, a in enough relationship to relate something to uh, to one of those predicted classes so disparate impact is uh, another indirect uh, bias that you need to worry about uh, transparency in the algorithm I've already mentioned about this that actually that uh, we don't want machine learning to become a black box uh, to be used by users uh, so it has to have a way to explain uh, why it predicted something to be bad or good uh, a few algorithms have been used to fire I mean teachers and at a high school uh, you can look it up uh, uh, the link is given there so without being able to give them an explanation of why the model indicated that they should be fired so it will create uh, public scrutiny so uh, definitely you need to be aware of that some uh, uh, some f examples like actually if you google search doctors or I mean essentially image search doctors uh, or nurses or uh, uh, CEOs you might see discrepancy in in the I mean uh, uh, definitely a bias skewness in the classes uh, of the of the outcomes of the search results uh, so who will make the final decisions uh, who is in charge of making the decision human or a computer program uh, so that's that's the question that we will ponder uh, and uh, say <clears throat> there is a software uh, used by a judicial system I don't know actually where that is uh, the the full name of the software is correctional offender management profiling for alternative sanctions uh, it was biased toward predicting blacks uh, to be more likely to be involved in any future crime if released on a payroll so it, I mean it's called the recidivism prediction model uh, and so this is actually one part uh, of the machine learning model uh, built uh, or developed or deployed uh, which was biased so you need to be careful about that uh, and so let's talk about fake videos disinformation uh, etc if you let your program to learn from the organic internet uh, raw unmoderated internet sources what the best you can expect from you, you uh, so definitely those videos fake so these are making things too hard that actually uh, no longer videos uh, are I mean or will be accepted as an evidence in the courtroom uh, you, we don't forget about the uh, full self-driving initiative by several uh, EV industries uh, that you know uh, they, they forget about, I mean uh, definitely they are there is an ethical point uh, ethical question and which is raised by uh, Philippa Foot many many years ago 1967 uh, it's called the famous I mean or infamous trolley problem I mean should you pull the lever so say for example you are the conductor I mean uh, who will direct yeah this train the approaching train to any one of this direction uh, so I mean should you pull the lever I mean which direction should you pull the lever uh, so car owners uh, I mean, car owners those full 
fully autonomous vehicles uh, self-driving uh, enabled vehicle uh, definitely come to this point actually that different scenarios given different scenarios like this uh, what should it decide uh, should we let the machine or the computer program to kill somebody uh, say uh, car owners should determine their car's ethical values so ethical values i mean definitely you need to quantify or i mean in in a way that you need to measure uh, such as say for example uh, safety of the owner first or the owner's family first or safety of the uh, uh, pedestrian say for example i pay big money to buy a car with full autonomous uh, system enabled is it ethical expectation from me to protect me and my family only in the car rather than pulling over a pedestrian crossing the street in a hazardous situation maybe uh, the driver most of the cases the driver is at fault most likely as you know from the driving school so i mean definitely actually what do you expect from this i mean uh, i paid big money to save me but uh, so should you let uh, the computer in the full autonomous uh, car to kill me uh, it's debatable right so uh, can we introduce morally morality uh, into into machines uh, or how can you introduce morality uh, into the machine so uh, it, it, i mean are we all i mean uh, building those patterns uh, say rule based programs or programs fol following the uh, utilitarianism uh, choose whichever uh, is good for the majority what if the majority overpowers the minority who is good or who is bad these are all relative terms i mean uh, we don't have concrete answers uh, to that but again uh, we human continuously uh, strive and being challenged by this type of scenario so think before you start writing code uh, to build a machine learning system uh, you remember that story of the of a saint uh, in a temple many many years ago uh, who always tells the truth uh, one day a wounded fe fellow uh, barely ran into the temple and fell near the feet of the saint and asked for help by allowing him to hide somewhere in the temple uh, to get away uh, from a group of thugs uh, he called thugs uh, who were looking for him to kill the scent was quiet and uh, the fellow quickly hid into a closet while a group of people opened the door of the temple the seems to be the leader asked uh, if the saint saw a person of certain height or um, the, the description he, he, he mentions about the hair color and so on and so forth got into the temple or fled somewhere that he can help them with right uh, the tracking that guy since the saint never told a single lie in his entire life and he showed them where he hid in in the temple and the group found the person and killed him in front of the saint although it was i mean a religious story meaning as a consequence the saint had to go to the hell uh, regardless of all the good things he did uh, so even without the religious touch okay so uh, definitely actually touch of this story i mean the moral of the story is actually definitely uh, you need to follow i mean we human follow our conscience and, and in, inside uh, us that you need to feel inside actually what is good and bad right so uh, the common sense that we possess the humors that we uh, play or laugh about or uh, sometimes we take it seriously so everything makes us us right I mean the humankind how can you write a program to mimic this right so uh, so I don't want to go into uh, the, the religious or political debate right now but i want to emphasize that you must think uh, about the implications of your cool and shiny machine learning pro program uh, all right so one last learning strategy that we are used to is learning by watching right the whole life i mean we either acted and learned something uh, and most likely actually we learned that actually to not do that uh, say maybe you experienced burning a finger uh touching a candle what you learn from it uh definitely do not touch a candle when lit 
right? So there are two variants of the machine learning model par paradigm that we'll cover. Uh, one is the reinforcement learning is by acting, actually. Uh, that say, for example, you touched uh, the lead candle and burnt your finger. Uh, and and you learned a lesson that actually that that's too hot or it's, it's, it's intolerable uh, for our skin. There is the second variety of learning is called apprenticeship based learning uh, where I learned watching you burn your finger right so that's I mean because I trust you and uh, and you told probably told the story um, in in, 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 the, in a class uh, where we, we hang out and, uh, and and share the story so everybody knows and maybe at least most of uh, most of uh, your friends know that actually that uh, touching a burning candle is I mean is not a good idea all right so uh, so that's about some of the challenges uh, of building or uh, developing a machine learning system at least before you plan uh, so I'll, uh, I hope you've got that idea and I'll see you in the next video thank you